Good morning, everyone, on this Wednesday of the 14th week in Ordinary Time. I'm starting out a little bit later because uh, the sewer is going to be worked on in front of the church. So I was talking to some of the guys who are going to be doing that. We are continuing our reading in the book of Genesis, chapter 41, 55 through 57, and then chapter 42, 5, verses 5 through 7a, and then verses 17 through 24a. When hunger came to be felt throughout the land of Egypt, and the people cried to Pharaoh for bread, Pharaoh directed all the Egyptians to go to Joseph and do whatever he told them. When the famine had spread throughout the land, Joseph opened all the cities that had grain and rationed it to the Egyptians, since the famine had gripped the land of Egypt. In fact, all the world came to Joseph to obtain rations of grain, for famine had gripped the whole world. The sons of Israel were among those who came to procure rations. It was Joseph, as governor of the country, who dispensed the rations to all the people. When Joseph's brothers came and knelt down before him with their faces to the ground, he recognized them as soon as he saw them. But Joseph concealed his own identity from them and spoke sternly to them. With that, he locked them up in the guardhouse for three days. On the third day, Joseph said to his brothers, Do this and you shall live, for I am a God-fearing man. If you have been honest, only one of your brothers need to be confined in this prison, while the rest of you may go and take home provisions for your starving families. But you must come back to me with your youngest brother. Your words will thus be verified, and you will not die. To this they agreed. To one another, however, they said, Alas, we are being punished because of our brother. We saw the anguish of his heart when he pleaded with us, yet we paid no heed. That is why this anguish has now come upon us. Reuben broke in. Did I tell you not to do wrong to the boy? But you would not listen. Now comes the reckoning for his blood. The brothers did not know, of course, that Joseph understood what they said since he spoke with them through an interpreter. But turning away from them, he wept the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are making a quick move through the book of Genesis. We're not going chapter by chapter, verse by verse. We're kind of getting the main highlights. And the main highlights is seeing that God has made a promise with Abraham and then his descendants, he makes a promise and that he will fulfill his promises. But it seems to always seem to be a more, uh, well, kind of a twists and turns, as it were. And we saw this uh, uh, the last two days, especially with uh, Jacob and how life wasn't always exactly easy for him. But yet in each point in case, God is there and helps him. Well, the, we have now the story of Joseph. We suddenly jump into that one. And for most of us, we know the story that he was sold into slavery by his brothers. They were kind of jealous of him and the kind of attention that he was given. But here we're seeing in no small measure that they are actually being saved through Joseph. That the children of Israel could have been uh, decimated through the famine that was throughout the land. But instead, God so worked it out, even though his brothers meant it for evil, God meant it for good, and allowed Joseph to get into the position that he had within the Egyptian government, and also then to save his people. It's an interesting thoughts, something to ponder. The ways of God are astounding. Sometimes we don't see it in the midst of where we're at, and we have no clue why things are happening the way they are. It's those times that we got to stop and remember incidences like this in the life of Joseph and his brothers and the family and say, yet I will believe and trust in God. He 
He knows what's going on. Let's do that today. Stay safe, folks. Hopefully we'll see each other soon. Bye for now.